Hello, I find it very useful to write computer programs to test my understanding of new ideas as I come across them. This process allows me to test whether I understand whether or not I understood what a particular result is telling me. For example, if I'm told something about a sequence, I might write a short program to calculate and pro plot progressively larger and larger terms of the sequence in order to visualize the limiting behavior of the sequence. We're going to perform one of these little numerical exercises, experiments, in the next few exercises. This video lays the groundwork for the experiments that you will then perform with the computer. At the end of the video, I will introduce a question. Understanding the significance of the, question, of the answer to this question is essential in terms of understanding probability theory and statistics. If all goes to plan, however, you will determine the answer to this question yourselves by writing the computer programs that are explained in the next few exercises. In the subsequent weeks, we will put more flesh on the bones of this idea, but you will hopefully remember the central result given that it has been introduced to you on your own journey of discovery. Without further ado then, let's first briefly consider what you now know how to do. In the previous two exercises, you have generated graphs similar to the one shown on this slide. The Y value for each of the black dots are in this graph is a uniform continuous random variable. In this case, these uniform random variables are between 0 and 1. But, given what you did in the previous exercise, you now know enough Python to generate uniform random variables that fall between any lower bound, A, and end upper bound, B. Now notice that these points are clustered around this red line, which falls at the midpoint of the range, i.e. A plus B all over 2. There are, on average, as many points above this line as there are below this line. Furthermore, all of our random variables fall within a distance of b minus a over, all over 2 of this line. Now consider what I said was the aim of the exercises this week. In the video that you watched before you completed the planning exercises for the weeks, I told you that we'd learned to write computer programs to calculate the mean. We had learned to calculate the number of times we'd seen a particular result. And last but not least, we had learned to sort the data and plot the cumulative probability distribution function. In other words, we'd, calculated, we'd learned these various different ways of calculating statistics from data sets. In the last couple of weeks, we had then left these ideas behind and instead considered probability theory and how to generate the various types of random variables that are indicated on this slide. These probability distributions have probability mass functions that tell us how likely we are to get a particular result when we generate random variables from them. Furthermore, all of these probability distributions are functions of one or two parameters. I then told you that the aim of this week was to write programs for estimating the parameters of a particular distribution by generating a large number of random variables and computing statistics. In other words, the aim was to connect these two ideas that we have investigated in the computer programming exercises that you have done thus far. Before we do that, let's consider the possible results that we might get if we perform a ex numerical experiment to estimate a parameter in this way in the abstract. Suppose that the true value of the parameter is here. Let's then suppose that our estimates of the parameter are all over here. Each estimate takes a different value as each estimate is random. All the randoms fall within a certain range, however, and this range is centered on the point shown here. Just as the uniform random variables on the first slide were centered on A plus B all over 2. Now, 
Clearly, the method that we have used to estimate the parameter here is not particularly good. None of the estimates of the parameter that we have obtained are close to the true value. Furthermore, the center of the distribution of these estimates is not similar to the true value for the parameter. We thus state that this method has a low accuracy as the distribution of estimates we get by sampling this multiple times is not centered on the true value of the parameter. A second set of estimates we might get when we perform our experiment are shown here. These estimates are more spread out. Happily, however, the center of the distribution is centered on the true value of the parameter. We thus say that this method has a high accuracy, as the distribution of estimates is centered on the true value of the parameters. This method has a low precision, however, as all of the estimates are rather spread out. This brings us to the ideal situation, which is illustrated here. This method of estimating the parameter has a high accuracy, as the distribution is centered on the true value. In addition, however, all of the points are clustered together and the method thus has a high precision. Now, notice that just because a method is high precision does not imply that it is good. The results in the top figure of this slide are all clustered together. The method for estimating the parameter is thus precise even though the method for estimating the parameter is not particularly good as the distribution of estimates is not centered on the true value for the parameter. The method at the top of the slide thus has a high precision but a low accuracy. This brings us to the nature of the numerical experiments that we are going to perform over the next few exercises. We are going to consider two different ways of estimating the expectation of a distribution, and we are going to try and identify the method that gives us a more precise estimate of the expectation. We also want this method to be accurate, however. In other words, we want all our estimates of the mean to be clustered around and close to the true value of the expectation. With that in mind, let's reintroduce the quantity that we are going to use as an estimator for the expectation. The quantity of interest is the sample mean, which is shown on this slide. You have seen this quantity before, and by now you hopefully know that n here is the total number of samples that you have taken from the distribution. If you are not yet comfortable with the summation notation, notice that we can rewrite the expression at the top of the slide as shown at the bottom of the slide. Each of the xi in, this, in these expressions is an identically distributed random variable. You can thus calculate a sample mean by generating a collection of random variables, all of which are from the same distribution, um, in the same way that you have done this when you have plotted all of the random variables. Instead of plotting them, however, you instead add them all together and divide by the number of random variables that you generated. Notice that any sample mean that you calculate it is a sum of random variables. Consequently, the sample mean is itself a random variable. If a value is constructed by taking a sum of random components, it must be random. We can thus ask ourselves what the expectation of this random variable is equal to. To do so, we must take the expectation of the sum shown here, which we can expand out without the summation shine as shown here. We now recall that the expectation is a linear operator. This idea was covered in the video that you watched at the start of the week. As expectation is a linear operator, we can rewrite the expectation of the sum as a sum of expectations, as shown here. Next, note that all the random variables we've added together are identically distributed. 
They thus have all have the same expectation, which we will call mu. As there are n random variables in the sum, we can thus rewrite this whole expression as n times mu. Now note that the n's in the numerator and the denominator cancel. We thus find that the expectation of the sample mean is equal to the expectation of the distribution that was repeatedly sampled to construct it. In other words, a single random variable, capital X, and a sample mean that is calculated by adding together multiple X random variables from the same distribution as X are both accurate expect estimators for the expectation of the random variable capital X. In that, what I mean by this is that the distributions of these two quantities will both be centered on the true value of the expectation. The question that you will seek to answer in the exercises that follow concerns which of these two accurate estimators of the expectation is more precise. In other words, do we get a more precise estimate of the expectation if we calculate a mean, or are you better off just calculating a single random variable and assuming that this is a good estimate for the expectation of the distribution that was sampled? You may already be able to guess, or you may even know, the answer to this question. Good luck with the exercise regardless. I will talk to you once again once you've worked out the answer for yourself.